All right, everyone, let's get started. So uh, I'm going to continue the work that we started last time. So uh, inside of our project folder, we can edit the index HTML file to remind ourselves what we did briefly. Open up your index file and then run it. And the last thing that we were working on was personalization for this web app where if you load up the the project and you go to the info screen there's a customize button you click that you add your name click OK and then when you go back to the main screen there's your name welcome Victor so that was a very basic way to do it that's where we ended up with last time and that was uh, via JavaScript so actually, we should open our index file and our codica.ext.js file. So I've got both index and codica.ext.js open. That's what you should open. And remember what we did there was we created a function that when you click that customize button, it runs the customize function. It creates a variable, it prompts the person to add their name, and it captures that name. And then that name is put on the screen wherever it says welcome message via inner HTML. So that's where we ended up last time. And as I say, well, we'll do it first the dumb way, and then we'll do it the smart way. The smart way is that I want this data to be permanent, because once I exit the file and load it again, my name is gone. The data was captured temporarily, and now it's no longer customized when I come back. See that? So the smarter way is to use some, some form of a more permanent storage, and that's when we get into HTML5 storage, where there's local storage and session storage. So we're going to save our name in a more permanent way. Secondly, also about doing this the smart way, is that notice this works when you put in your name and a person can continue to customize it and their name will show up. Um, but I said earlier last time that I wanted to say my name in a variety of places. Um, it just says my name uh, on the welcome screen. If I go over to the art screen, it says become an artist. And I would like it to say become an artist, Victor. And over on computers, learn about computers, Victor. I would want it to say my name in a variety of screens, not just the first screen. So we'll deal with that as well. So I've got my index file loaded and my codica.js file. And as we started with last time, uh, we're going to use the example from um, w w3schools.com. So I'm going to open another web browser here w3schools.com where it had some of the documentation for how to use HTML5 storage. You can load this up if you want or not, but uh, this is what we're going to go by. So w3schools.com, learn HTML5 over here. I'm not sure that if you go here, you'll get to what I want to look at. It's definitely in the learn HTML5 screen. And then along the left side, HTML5 APIs, local storage. So the thing about uh, HTML5 is that probably since around 2009 or so, maybe a little earlier, HTML5 has been evolving. Um, HTML 1.0 was around for a long time, 2.0, 4.0, etc., and then it was going to go off until XHTML 1.1, and then there was going to be XHTML 2.0. But then that was a competing group trying to put a competing standard. And then there was the HTML version 4. So eventually things uh, kind of merged back together so that it comes back to HTML 5. There's a, a long story about how HTML5 came about and, 
And I remember in those days when this standard was first coming out and they were saying, this standard really isn't going to be fully implemented until about 2012 or 2011. And back in 2009, that was like, wow, that's a, that's a lifetime in the world of, of the internet from 2009 to 2012. So much is going to change. And it has changed. Now, uh, in those days, I remember many of these things were so experimental, you couldn't, you couldn't do them on most web browsers. Those rounded corners, the drop shadows, something like this was not available on the older versions of the web browsers. And eventually, standards won out, pretty much, and we have this way to store data. It's a, it's a type of a database in that it's very simple. If you've got experience with other databases, relational databases and such, this is a very simple version of a database where it's only a key and a value <coughs> pair. And that's all we really need at the moment. Later on, we will need more complicated ways to store data, and that's when we eventually will get into CouchDB. Uh, so we'll use local storage at the moment. And to refresh our memory specifically, we're going to do this. If you scroll down to the part where it says the local storage object, uh, where it says the example above could also be written like this, this is what we're going to use. We're going to go by this. Um, this this type of semantics where we have to write local storage notice capital S dot last name or dot whatever variable name we're creating that could be username last name password <clears throat> uh, true false so that could be a variety of, uh, of of values here think of it as a variable name also it can have capital letters underscores numbers equals something whatever value we're putting into it, specifically a string. So Smith or John or Bill or whatever is a string, it's, it's words, it's, it's text, which is actually a different type than numbers. Numbers are not letters in, in many programming languages, including JavaScript. So if I were to say uh, local storage that last name equals uh, in quotes nine, it's not really a number nine, it's, it's, it's the word nine. It might not make sense at the moment, but the difference is that numbers and letters are different because I can add nine plus nine equals 18, but if I do nine plus nine in, in strings, it will equal to 99. It'll have the nine and the nine next to each other, not really added. So this is another sort of limitation with local storage in that it really only stores strings. But you can convert from type to type. If you save a, if you save a 9, which is technically a string, you can change its type to an actual number so you can add the numbers. Again, this might be a little over our heads at the moment, but it's something to think about, especially if, you're, if you have some experience in this already. So this is storing a value in a, ver in a local storage variable. Retrieving it so basically is down here, local storage dot last name. And the example shows that, again, the, the equal symbol, which is basically take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. So here, take the thing on the right, whatever's inside of last name, and put it into the result div. Most likely a div. So this is going to be what our example will be. So we'll have to change our existing code just a little bit. Let's go back to Notepad. Here's what we've currently got. Line 3, specifically. That line creates a temporary... Uh, it creates a variable that really only exists temporarily as the website is, is visible in the web browser. Let's take that line and copy it and paste it right below itself and comment out the previous line as a comparison. Just copy and paste your line and double slash to comment. And I think also what I'll do above that line that I just commented, I'll write something like plain old variable holding a value. Just to remind myself what that is exactly. On the next line, I'll write uh, HTML5 local storage holding a more permanent value. Again, these are uh, comments. 
They don't have any bearing on the on the program itself. This is just for yourself uh, to make a note. And here's what we need to do to change line 6. Remove where it says VAR. And as per uh, the W3Schools example, we're going to write local storage, capital S, dot username. So notice how it used to be, var, and then the name of the variable equals whatever. And then now it's local storage dot username equals whatever. That's all we need to do. We've created a variable that is permanent now. It's saved in the web browser, not in the computer's memory, not in some extra file that's on the hard drive like a regular cookie. Uh, this is being saved into the web browser, into its own um, specific repository of permanent data, which we'll look at where is that at in a moment. Uh, so we've created the variable technically kind of, and then we've saved that as a local storage object. To retrieve it, we need to then change line 7. Mm, let's do this. Let's copy line 7 and paste it also, just so that we have a copy of it to compare the two. So I'm going to copy line 7 and write, um, uh, loading a plain old variable, or accessing. comment dot that line and then here we'll say HTML5 local storage accessing a value in local storage just anything that uh, that makes sense to you And since it's, since it's a comment, you can format it however you want. Notice I'm just putting dashes here so that I can so that it stands out that this is a comment and that was my code optional. Uh, however you want to do comments is fine. But the double slashes create a one-line comment. So here's how we're going to change line 10. Uh, same thing as our example previously, uh, our, what we just wrote. We, here we're trying to load username, which is a variable, but we actually want to lo open a, a local storage variable. So it'll be local storage dot username and that's it so the first line we created the object and saved the value into it the person's name and then the second one we retrieved it local storage save it and run your index and try it add a name click OK etc close the web browser open it again and it no, actually, we're forgetting one thing. Uh, it's not loading automatically. We'll do that in one moment. This is what I mean. So, um, customize, put in a value, click OK, go back. OK, at, at the moment, what we can only really see is that, yes, the value loads up. This works. Um, in a moment, then we'll see about it automatically loading up every time we open the site so that it remembers us. Did this work for everyone? It should work the same as before, but with some new, with local storage.
But it was just confirm it on this uh, on this browser. All right, so what we should get at this point really only is that it works like before. And I was getting ahead of, uh, we were getting ahead of ourselves. Eventually is that when we close the web browser and come back to the file, to, to the home page, it, it'll, it'll say your name. We're not quite there yet, but at least it's working to save our name. Now let me check something here. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back to Notepad, and then let's go back to your index file and click Run Chrome. Now, we're going to see where is this data being stored. As I said, it's not going to be saved like a traditional cookie in that there is a place on the hard drive where all your cookies are stored. Uh, we have to look at the internal storage of the web browser, and I think Firefox has a way to view this, but off the top of my head, I don't remember where it's at. I know where it's at on Chrome. Uh, so let's do this. Let's launch our index in, in, in Chrome. Uh, Right-click any empty area of your website and do the inspect element. Remember, we looked at the, this, uh, this developer tools, the inspect element in Firefox. We have something very, very similar in Chrome, it's inspect element. So this should look familiar, it's very much like the Firefox one, but it's got an extra screen that I think it's in Firefox somewhere, maybe one of you will help me find it. But here in Chrome we can go to this little tab that says resources. So switch over to this tab right here called resource, uh, not profiles, resources right here. Let's switch to resources. And what this does is it gives you a list of the internal storage that this web browser is currently saving. Uh, so we have different ways to save data in the web browser. Notice cookies, session storage, local storage, and a couple of types of other databases. So if you open up local storage, the little triangle here, it's basically going to tell you what data this website has stored. Now, as I said, we have not... Well, as I said, uh, the data gets stored when you use local storage, it gets stored in the web browser. We opened that index file in Firefox, so it stored our name in Firefox. We have not opened it in Chrome yet, so it has not stored that value. So, notice it's empty here. There's no no values inside of local storage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually go here to the info and add my name. Customize, add my name, click OK. 
close that to go back home. It says my name right there. And then I need to refresh. I need to click this little refresh button down here. And I should have something that says username, which wasn't there before. Key, username, value, the name you just wrote. I'm going to customize it again, just to show you. Go back here, select Customize, I'll put in a new name, Andrew. Click OK. So on screen it says, Welcome Andrew. But now when I refresh the local storage, Andrew is inside of username. And what I'll do more extremely here, you don't have to do this, but you can if you want. I'm going to close the web browser completely. I'm going to go back to Notepad and uh, run in Chrome again. I'm not, I'm not going to go to the info screen yet. Inspect element, resources, local storage, file, username. It remembered Andrew. Right, did that work for everyone? Did everyone see that concept in action? Question. If you go to a completely different website in Chrome, does mm -hmm. that is that variable still there? Yes. You Don't can other, other websites could access it? No, no it, the variable is there, but other websites cannot access it. So if you're asking, can I go to yahoo.com, will the variable still be there? Yes, the variable will still get saved inside of Chrome. But, Fire, uh, but Yahoo will not be able to access that variable. That's what the specification of local storage is, that only the site that created it can access that data. So it has that inherent security built in. No, because it's a separate file, it's a separate site, it's a separate entity. So different uh, user, different variables can have the same name even though because different files created them, different sites. So I did a quick look up in I did a quick look up to see how can I see my local storage values in Firefox. And it's a little more cumbersome. It's not as graphically friendly in Firefox. You have to go, you have to go, I'm checking this out in Firefox. I'm in the element inspector again, remember that? But I went over to console and typed local storage, and then this shows me what values are saved under local storage. So I can look at it that way. Username, that's my value. I'm going to add another value. And then in the console in Firefox, I can say, show me, I guess, all local storage values, and they show up here. Username, John. Question. Um, you can't see the customization function. It's a low value. Yes. Uh, that's part of the error checking that we should do, that if, if we go to customize and we, we don't enter anything, we cancel that. 
then here it'll say null. If nothing is valid, we if nothing is added, the call the result of canceling the prompt is null, so we should have some if else statements about dealing with cancelization. So can it tell the difference between someone who clicked cancel and someone who typed null? Good point. I would think that I don't know. I would think that they're the same. I guess null is an entity, but I guess we could type the name null, but it's not the same type. Now you're just getting now you're just getting tricky. Yeah, probably if you looked at that value, it would have a different type associated with it. Most likely. Probably a null type. Whereas this null has a type of string. If we look at it in Chrome, does it show any difference about that one? Does it make a distinction between null the data type and null the uh, string value? Let's see, so I'm going to cancel that. It says null value, but doesn't quite seem to say if it, it doesn't seem to say it's a data type from here. There might be something in the console that we can um, that we can do to maybe get the data type from it. I think the JavaScript has is no comparator. Uh, uh, Say that again. I think the JavaScript has an is no comparator. No, I think so. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's go a little further. Uh, what we've done is we've allowed people to um, to write a name, and then um, it gets saved more permanently. And what I want to do is that when someone exits the site completely and comes back, I want it to remember that name and show it automatically. <coughs> What's the point of customization if you have to remind it every time? I want it to show my name as soon as I load the, um, uh, the, um, the project. So this is when we're going to get into some if-else statements. We're going to get into decision-making. Remember that the the um, the Google Maps has a little bit of that. If I have a starting position or whatever it was called, and if I have an ending position, show a map, or else don't show a map because I don't have coordinates. So if else, remember as I said, if I'm hungry, I'm going to get something to eat. Um, if then. If that's true, I'm going to go get something to eat. If, I'm, if it's false, that means I'm not hungry, so I won't get anything to eat. I need to do something similar like this. I need to say that as soon as I load up this project, if I have a name, display the name. Or else, if I don't have a name, don't display the name. So we're going to have some simple if-else statements here. Let's go back to... Codica, our Codica file here. And so after our code, I'm going to enter a couple of lines here. I'm going to start on line 13. And we'll write if, open close parentheses, space curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, space else, open curly brace, couple of lines, close curly brace. And I think our semicolon goes there. 
So uh, this is a very simple skeleton, an if-else statement. Basically, if is always testing for something to be true. If it's true, we will do the stuff inside of the first curly brace pair. You can think of it like this. Within the first pair of curly braces, the true result happens. And within the else curly brace section, the false result happens. Question? Can you have more than one else? Like yes, you can have an else if. So you can have um, else if, and then run another sort of test here. So we've got one test, if this is true or false. If that one does, if that one becomes false, test it on this next one. Else if, try this one. Else if, try this one. You can have as many as you want. There's many ways to make these sort of uh, conditional statements, things that are based on a condition. There's else if, there's do while, there's um, what else? You're probably thinking of uh, like switch case. Like switch is another one. Um, so there's lots of ways to make a decision. So yes, you could have more. Now, you, if you're asking, can I have more than one else? No, there's else is the else is else. That's the last one. But I can have something like this if you know something, and then after this, have one more else. Else is sort of like the if all else fails. You can have more than one test, and then at the very end, we can have the final if all else fails. Do this. If everything I've tried is false, this is the final chance, or this is the final attempt based on everything being false. So we'll, we'll be simple. We'll just say true, false, yes or no. This happens or it doesn't happen, if else. So what I want to do is I want to check um, I want to check do we have a value. If we do have a value, display it. Uh, if we don't have a value, um, don't display it. And here's how we here's how this can get a little confusing. Sometimes it works a little better to sort of take test the opposite of things. If I, if I am not hungry, let's do this. That must mean that if I am hungry, do that. See that? So I can test for something positive. If I am hungry, let's do this result or that else. Or if I'm not hungry, let's do this result or that result. So I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to check if there is no value. Um, don't do anything. We already have a name. Actually, what I'm going to check is for undefined. Not that there's no values, that, the, that it's undefined, that we don't have anything, that we haven't created that local storage value. We're going to check, is that local storage value undefined, that it doesn't exist? And if it does exist, then we can actually put it on screen. So, in this if, let's write local storage dot username that's the name of the local storage object we just created on top here storage sorry about that local storage username and then we'll do equals equals. There's no space there. It's two equal symbols. I'll explain what that is in a moment. Undefined. Okay, so we're, we're checking if something is true. Remember, anything in the parentheses, if this is true, then do what's inside of the true section, or else it must be false, so do what's inside of the else section. So what I'm trying to check is equals equals means is... Previously when we had equals, we've, we've basically said take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. When we've got equals equals, we're, now we're saying is the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right? 
So if I was checking to see if the username is Andrew, that's what I could do. Local storage username equals equals Andrew. So if what's inside a local storage is Andrew equals equals, then that's true. If it's not Andrew, if it's John, then that means it's false and it goes to else. So two equals there. So here we're saying if the local storage username is undefined, my result will be actually I won't do anything yet. There's no username to display on the screen. Um, so our else is okay. No, it, since it's backwards, um, the else is that we do have the value in this case. So if we do have the value, we're going to display it on screen, which will just copy line 10. Line 10 is the one that actually displays the user name on screen. So just copy line 10 and put it in your false section. We'll see why false in a moment. Save that. I'm going to run it in Chrome. Oops, that was Firefox. Uh, run in Chrome. Apparently. I, I think our problem is that when this JavaScript is running at the top of the head, mm -hmm. the uh, the element that we have that we're ID, preaching by ID it does not get used on the page. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, that makes sense. That we, since we're going from top to bottom and this runs from the head, we go through this and this element doesn't exist yet, so it doesn't display it. Uh, well, I guess we can we'll test it by console. The. Um, yeah, cannot set property inner HTML of null, so it has it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, so that's what it's saying here. We're trying to use welcome message, but it doesn't exist yet because we have it up on the header. Uh, well, we can deal with that by... Let's see, what if we put that in a function and then run the function from the from the end of the document. Or you could just you put that code in the script tag at the bottom of the document too. Yeah. Let's try that then. So there's several ways to skin the digital cat. So this code uh, should work, but we're running it at the wrong time. The, the logic of it is that because, because this is in codeca.ext, notice our index file at the top says on line 20, 
run from top to bottom, get to line 20, stop everything that you're doing and go over the go over to the Kodika file, run everything there. When you're done with that, come back to the HTML file and then continue running. So what happened is when we jump, when we go over to the Kodika file, there's no there's no message div placeholder at that moment. So it cannot display the text. So we'll put that script uh, at the bottom of our document so after all of this renders then we will have the option to display the value of the local storage because it, now it exists this welcome welcome message question because it did go, it did wait everything happened in the order that it needed to happen in that we don't need to use um, customize until we click on it. So everything has loaded. And then we click customize, and then it runs customize, and then it displays it on screen because it exists. Here we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're trying to display something <coughs> before it exists, the welcome message div, or H2. So let's try it this way. Um, let's uh, select that code, this whole if-else thing, line 13 to 18. Let's cut it. Don't copy, because uh, you'll have a duplicate code. Select it and then cut it. Save that file, and then go to your index, and we'll go all the way to the bottom of the document, right before slash body. And before slash body, let's add a script section. So we can have this the script section at the at the head or in the body or in its own separate file. So make sure you created the script tag after the slash slash div before the end of slash script. And then paste in there. Remember, you cut and paste. Welcome, ABC. Yes? If you want, you could leave that in the external file and then just bring in uh, the the, uh, the external file down there at the bottom, too. Um, Instead of up at the header, sure. The main thing is that all the objects have to be on the page before you can do anything. Or you have to do some trickery, like you know, wait until the page is loaded. Yeah, we could it. add it to the body on load or maybe on, on finish load. I think there's another event handler like that. Um, yeah, there's many ways to do it. Um, so did this did this method work for everyone? Did you get that your name appeared? No? Okay, uh, raise your hand. Let me let me help you out. But you should see now, I, had not, I did not need to type my name again. It remembered it, and it was able to display it, but we, we got ahead of ourselves in the order of code.
All right, so um, did anyone try to run this in Firefox? Yeah. Did it work in Firefox? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me try. I'm going to put John and run in Firefox. And it doesn't. It might be what's going on is... Um, that because the file is not on a web server, there's a limitation there for sandboxing. So we're testing it in Chrome and it works. Uh, and if this was uploaded, most likely it would work. So um, that's why we, we're jumping between different web browsers to have different things work because some of their security settings are a bit uh, different. Works online. So you close it completely and open it and it's there? Weird. Yes. So why does it have to do that there when you're on the internet? Let me answer that one 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 moment. So you're you're on Firefox, it is working for you. Okay. Well, I believe you guys. Okay, so this works. We have more than one person to verify it. Okay, so why did we move it down here? It was because this code wants to display the person's name in the element that is tagged welcome message, the H2. And when we had it up on the, uh, in the external file, it wasn't able to access the H2 called welcome message because it didn't exist yet. So now that we've gone through the whole code, now it exists. And when it gets to this point, now it can show it there. So if that worked for us, let's um, let's actually do it like this because I usually want I usually don't want to put code all the code in a spe specific file because I may want to reuse that code on another file. So proof of concept is that it worked, but actually I want it to run here, but I don't want the code to live here. So uh, let's actually cut it and return it to the external file. So okay do this one more time, a slightly different way. Cut this code out of the index, leave your script tags there, we're going to use them. But go back to your external file and, and put, it, put it back there. But we're going to wrap this around a function so that whenever we need to use this, we call the function and we can do it in different files. What about put it in a kind of ready function? That that might work specifically. What what do you mean? Uh, I thought there was like an on ready or ready. So it only works. It's like I think dollar sign ready, and then brackets and then everything in that. Those brackets only go once everything's loaded in your HTML. I don't doubt that it would work, but. Um, I would need to see exactly how that's written just so that I can show the whole class. So uh, if you can look that up for me, then after the break I can show the class. But let's do it this way first. Um, uh, notice how we created a function, we named it, and then we did stuff inside of it. So we'll do something similar here. Uh, paste that code back into Codica and we'll create a function. We'll call it load name. Don't forget the curly braces at the end. Tab that over. So now what we can do here is call load name in the index, and then it'll run that. Uh, that way we have all of this code, which I may want to reuse on another file, um, defined as a function. And when I need to use it, I can just call that function. Let's give that a try. So don't forget this uh, curly brace right here. This curly brace closes the function. 
this one closes the if, actually the else. Else. Say that again. Why don't we just have a function return the customized name? Again, there's many ways we, we can do this. So, uh, yeah, we can have return here and then that custom binds name. We can use it elsewhere. Yeah, many ways to do it. So, we've defined the function and um, back on here we can write load name. And so back on this index file, we just have to call the name of the function instead of having all the code there. So it runs load name and it runs and then it runs steps through those that if else part and then it displays it on screen. And so this is the same as before, but do you see now if we wrap everything inside of a function, we can use that code wherever we want. We could use it in separate files. Did that work for everyone? If it didn't, try it on a different browser just to get a second opinion. Okay, so I'm loading uh, up the file, and because it's permanent in local storage, uh, it is able to retrieve it via this if-else statement. You notice that it's kind of working false. You would think, okay, if the name exists, let's show the name, or else don't show the name. But I kind of did it a little bit backwards where if the value is uh, undefined, that the variable does not exist, don't do anything. If the variable does exist with a local storage object, then show it. Question? Yeah, Firefox doesn't see... For me, Firefox doesn't work and Internet Explorer doesn't work. For a few people, it does seem to work, Firefox. Now, um, a student here said, for uh, Internet Explorer does not show the local storage because it's on a local file. It should be on the on a web on a website. So I think if we've got our project on a website and we look at it in Firefox, it should work because it's expecting it to be online. So maybe that's our limitation in testing it. That's why we're testing it in in Chrome and it seems to work. Uh, and then I would test it on on Firefox, but it uploaded somewhere. We can't upload it anywhere, so we can't quite test it. Yes. Where you have the double equal sign, mm -hmm. if you put exclamation point equal sign, would that be the not equal? And then you could reverse it to and false? Yes. So another way to do this, notice we're doing equals equals, meaning is the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right? We could have exclamation point equals, which is, means not. If local storage is not undefined, meaning that yes, it's empty. See, this is when it's like a double negative thinking. 
yes, it's empty, then we should be able to do the document, display the document under true, and do nothing under false. So it's whatever way we want to get a true or false result, specifically a true result. Yes? Why did we use undefined and not null? What I've been looking, when I was setting this up and I was looking at the documentation and testing it, it seemed that undefined is what happens when there is no local storage value. When we clicked, if we click cancel, it adds null inside the the value, but it still exists. So again, we, we could test it. We can write, if it is null, oops. if it is null, but technically that would be different. See, it's still... Because one is, does the value ex... Do, is there a value in the local storage? And the other is, does the local storage value even, the local source object even exist? So we can test it like this. I can go into Chrome and I can delete that value. Back to the element inspector, back to resources, file here, username. I can click right here, delete that permanently from, from, from Chrome. I'll do that. Okay, so I deleted it permanently from Chrome. And then I run Chrome. Oops. I run Chrome. Nothing loads up because there's no value there's there's no there's not even a local storage object there's nothing inside of it yet well, we could put a generic like welcome friend or welcome student we could that would um, the easiest way is just just right there write it we don't even have to do anything fancy with if else and all of that we can just write welcome friend there but sure we could um, could do this. Just reuse that. Just reuse that and then make it say welcome friend. Not even using the local storage object because it doesn't exist. So let me clean out. Welcome, friend. So you see what's happening here is if if this is the first time a person ever visits the site, there is no local storage object called username. It's undefined. So if that's true, we're just going to make it say welcome, friend. As soon as a person customizes it, now it is defined. That becomes false. So then the false part happens, which is show the person's name. All right, any questions so far? Yes? In your index file on your H... Two. That H tag was. H2, where, yeah. Where it says welcome, there's not a way to put call, call the function there. Um, I think so. Why, why, would you, why would you want to do that? To get the same result? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could. You know how we have on click. We have, I think, we have on load. Okay. On load. So as soon as H two loads, run it. But here's our problem. We haven't fully finished this. I wanted oh. to say welcome on the home screen and welcome on the computer screen everywhere. So um, the way that you're saying would work, but perhaps yeah, just on welcome. Yeah. 
All right, so if it works so far on the home page, let's take a break. And then when we come back, we'll, we'll set it up so that it says your name on other screens as well. Uh, it's about 7.05. Let's take a... Um, Let's take a break until 7.20, uh, and then when we come back, we'll uh, learn some more.